Now, I know a lot of wrestling fans like to shit on WWE for their nostalgia acts, always having to go back to the stars of the past because they can't make the stars of the present. And you know what? That criticism is absolutely and totally valid, merited, justified, warranted in every way, shape, or form. The reason they have to go back to that reservoir of names of the past and dip into that inkwell way too often is because of the fundamental failures in their programming, in their creative, in their writing, in their character development today. I mean, that, that should be obvious to everybody. They just don't make stars like they used to. Now, some of that I do think is a reflection of the difference in the talent level and the types of talents that the business in encourages and the business recruits and brings into the fold today, but a lot of that has to do with the promotion itself, like WWE. They just don't have the Midas touch like they used to. They don't. So it makes sense. They have to go back to the old well. And even then, you talk about marginal benefit. You talk about the return on the investment. That decreases every single time that they do it because the novelty wears off. It starts to wear thin. When you do this shit too often, it just gets old. It's just like anything else, unfortunately. Human beings, we have a very short attention span. It's like when you brought back Goldberg and you had him initially come back against Lesnar and he beat Lesnar in that squash fashion at Survivor Series. Like, it was a big fucking deal. That was pretty damn awesome. But now you trot out Goldberg two to three times a year to lose to somebody. The appeal just isn't the same, even though he still has some of that big fight feel to him and he has that star presence, that charisma that most of this roster doesn't have. Again, though, diminishing return, diminishing return. Nostalgia acts are best when in small doses. So that said, you know, as much as it's frustrating to say, well, they got to go back to the well, got to go back to the well, and that's a failure in them. Yeah, that's true. But there's also a thing of, I'm looking ahead to this WrestleMania 38 card, and it looks like a big bag of dicks and bullshit. Now, at this point, I don't even care. Like, gloves off. You got to do whatever the hell you can to make this show actually look interesting, actually look appealing. And I'm sorry, but Ronda Rousey versus fucking Charlotte Flair ain't getting the job done for me, brother. It just isn't. So... Do whatever the fuck you got to do at this point. And with all of the nostalgia acts or the names of the past, there are some that still carry a tremendous amount of weight. Especially if you're talking about them coming back and working a match. You could certainly say that with The Rock, because even though you say like in the last decade, he came back and worked some matches, that was still several years ago. You don't see The Rock every day in WWE. You don't see The Rock even every year in WWE. So there is still a novelty there for a dude who is one of the biggest icons in the history of the wrestling business and is arguably the top action movie star in the fucking world. Any way that you can incorporate that dude into every WrestleMania makes fucking sense that you do it. And if you wouldn't do it, you're a goddamn clown. Why the hell would you not want the mainstream notoriety and press associated with somebody like The Rock? Right? And you could get that similar type of buzz for a Stone Cold Steve Austin. Now, it is not the same. Stone Cold Steve Austin current state is not the same level of mainstream star as The Rock. That is absolutely true. But there's no question in his time, Stone Cold Steve Austin was that dude. He is one of the icons in WWF slash E history. He is one of the biggest true franchise players of all time. And when you look at Austin, you know what can you really do with him to incorporate him in Dallas, Texas at WrestleMania this year that would feel different? Having him make a random appearance doesn't make much sense. You've been there, done that. While well, you could always do that, and it can work to a degree, again, diminishing return. You could have him be a guest referee. Been there, done that. I guess cool, but at what point in time do you also get a diminishing return on that? So what's left? How about a match for Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania? Now on the surface, yes. The last time Stone Cold worked a match was almost two decades ago. For a company that badly needs star power involved with their show, 
for a company that badly needs some sizzle to this damn show, for a company that could use any type of life that they could get, the fact that you could put on the marquee for WrestleMania 38, Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestling anybody after almost two decades away is a big, sizable, significant deal. Even though you have to wonder, Stone Cold Steve Austin's like, what, 57 now with the neck problems and everything else? Like, what type of shape is he going to be in? What type of ring shape is he going to be in? What the hell are you going to do? All of that. Like, you get it. If you're the WWE, you can throw enough money at Stone Cold and you give him enough of a sales pitch to where he's willing to do it, you have to do it. Now, I would personally question the timing of saying, why well, the fuck would you do it now? The time to do this was 8, 9, 10 years ago when you could have had Austin versus Punk. Like, that was the logical one. That was the one that the fan bases across the board were clamoring for. That was the match that people wanted to see. That was one of those matchups that felt worthy of a WrestleMania or a SummerSlam main event. That could have happened. That needed to happen. That should have happened. And it didn't happen, unfortunately. So how much appeal is there for a Stone Cold Steve Austin in 2022 to wrestle a damn match at WrestleMania? Especially when you look at the uh, rumored opponent, Kevin Owens? Kevin Owens! Kevin Owens! Of all the damn people to have a Stone Cold Steve Austin come back and wrestle at a WrestleMania for the first time since 2003, you're talking about potentially fucking Kevin Owens? I'm not trying to shit on fucking Kevin Owens here. But there is a huge differential between the importance and significance of a Stone Cold Steve Austin and a goddamn Kevin Owens. You have had Stone Cold go so many years without working a match. And the dude you're potentially going to have him come back against is a guy that you can't figure out from one moment to the next whether you want to treat him like a top player or not. Now, if Kevin Owens was like 27, 28 years old and you're saying, hey, at least you're trying to elevate somebody, you're trying to create a next generation dude, I'd say, you know what? Okay, that's what it's supposed to be about. Maybe Austin for once will actually do the right thing and do the honor when it fucking matters. Not like WrestleMania 19 when he did the honors to The Rock when it was too fucking late then. Didn't matter then. But Kevin Owens? Now, the much more logical space to me would have been Shane McMahon because you could have played off of the rivalry between Vincent Stone Cold, Vi you know, Stone Cold and Shane over the years. Like, that would have been the natural fit in terms of WrestleMania match, but apparently that's not going to happen. But Kevin Owens? Of all the people you're going to potentially tee up, of all the people that you could throw up for Steve Austin's first WrestleMania match in 19 years? It's Kevin Owens? Stunner versus Stunner. Oh, give me a fucking break. So what? That's my initial reaction to it. However, when I think about it a little more, I can think about it so much it even gets my eye twitching. When I think about it a little bit more, this can work. Kevin Owens can work. Kevin Owens could be the right opponent. It could be the perfect opponent. I think there's one way and only one way to do this. And that is taking the approach of John Cena versus The Undertaker a few years ago at WrestleMania. If you remember for weeks and weeks, John Cena was trying to call out The Undertaker, get The Undertaker to show up, throwing down the challenge for Undertaker at WrestleMania. He wanted this match to happen. And the question was going to be whether Undertaker was actually going to show up at WrestleMania. And then once Undertaker showed up at WrestleMania, it was like, holy shit, we're going to get Undertaker versus John Cena, and oh my god, Taker squashed John Cena in a couple of minutes. That was fucking terrific! You could do the same damn thing here with Stone Cold and Kevin Owens. Now, for those of you who are going to say that Stone Cold needs to put over Kevin Owens, no. No. That's dumb. That would be fucking ridiculous. You're taking one of the biggest stars of all time and having him job out to somebody that's not even one of the biggest stars of your company now. Like, logically, that doesn't make sense. Like, if you said you were going to have a Stone Cold, you know, lose to a Roman or a Bobby Lashley, somebody like that, you'd say, you know what? Brock Lesnar, even. You'd say, that makes sense. Those are the top dudes. 
Those are the now at least. How much of the future are they really? Eh. But they are the now at least. Kevin Owens certainly isn't the future. He's not even the present. He hasn't even really been the past. So the way this works best is for him to be like that John Cena type of role here where he's calling out Stone Cold every week. He's talking shit about Stone Cold, talking about how he's the true you know, king of the stunner and all this other crap. And he doesn't want to go to that redneck place down in Texas, but he's going to for WrestleMania and he hopes Stone Cold has the balls to show up. And then you have Stone Cold come out, stomp a couple mud holes, stun him, and that shit's over in two minutes, and then drinking beers and everybody's fucking happy. Why not? It's been so long since Stone Cold wrestled. If you have him come back just to lose, and lose to somebody that's not really worthy of beating a Stone Cold, it just doesn't work. It's not productive. Whereas if you have Kevin Owens play the heel role and you have him get beat quickly and everybody's so focused on how cool it is to see Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestle one more time at WrestleMania, a true retirement match that we really didn't get back at WrestleMania 19, everybody's going to be so happy about that they're not going to think about the other fucking thing. So this could work and it might actually make sense. It's the only way it could work though. This does not need to be a competitive match if they do this. And that's if they do it, because it's rumored. Who knows what's going to happen? It certainly does not need to result in Kevin Owens winning. Like, it is basically you bring in Stone Cold, stop a couple mud holes, hit a fucking stunner, one, two, three, arms raised, fucking beers thrown, beers chugged, mess made, everybody's happy, fucking end scene. That's it. It's the only viable option you have, but it could work. And it could be a nice little nostalgia moment at WrestleMania for a show that doesn't have a lot that it can kick up that is new or different. But Stone Cold Wrestling, in some capacity, even if it's in a short, controlled situation, like Taker Cena a few years ago, Stone Cold Wrestling, a match for the first time in like 19 years at WrestleMania. Yeah, I mean, if you can make it work, like you got to go for it. At this point in time, you get more mileage out of Stone Cold winning and beating a somewhat respectable name as opposed to putting over a top guy or putting over a somewhat respectable name.